Hello everybody, Just Mike here. Don't forget to subscribe because it's free. We have another cuckoo clock to see what's wrong with it. This one here is kind of in a pile, we'll say. It needs some help. We have a nice, I'm going to guess, a 325 or something like that. Weights will weigh that a little bit later. Uh, no marking on the back board, but it does have a gong. And it's sitting a little bit too close. It needs to be pulled out, so when it does gong, this doesn't touch the back. And have that awful sound when it does hit. We have the pendulum. This here, it's a little messed up because we have a uh, Gorilla Glue on here gluing the horns in, which is not what you want to do. You want those horns removable in case you decide to pack it away or take it in to get your clock fixed. You want to be able to pull them out, so I'm going to have to deal with... Oh, well, that one didn't get hurt. But anyway, we'll have to deal with digging that out, which just comes off pretty easily. And of course, we're going to take this off and wax it real good. Looks like I can unscrew these to get them popped off. But normally these are crossed together, so we're going to have to take a look at that and see whether we can get them crossed again or what's going on. Normally when they're crossed, they do have a, a nail going through and into the other one. So, like I say, we'll take a look at that. We have... The horn is not glued in, which is a good thing. So this way, when you work on the clock, when you flip it over, it doesn't rest on this and break off. This is already off the frame. So that kind of makes my job a little bit easier because normally when I wax these things, I want them off so I can do a very good job of waxing because it'll probably never get taken apart and waxed again. And here's a screw and a screw in order to take the bird and the rabbit off. And just to let you know, one thing that kind of irks me, my understanding is there's women that don't like these dead birds on here. Dead bird and dead rabbit. So what they'll do is they'll take it off and flip it clean around and screw it back on. Does that bird look like it's alive? And that's the same with the rabbit. That, that's so dorky that it's just one of my pet peeves, I guess we'll say. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get this brushed off good, them off, and wax that up. Coming to the clock... So far, the hands are still good. I'm not sure if these doors are original because they're a light color. But uh, either I'm going to stain them or I'm going to, well, I'm definitely going to wax them and they'll turn darker. But it has the bird on this side with plastic feet. And then there's the music man. And you can tell it's got... I don't know if sawdust or what that is all over this thing. These need to be put back in again. Both bellows are here. And by the looks of it, someone has worked on this because they marked it. Uh, the nails that belong in here, they didn't put those back in because you can see how they rock. And also I see here... I don't know if the weight disappeared or what. They have a washer on top, which, hey, it works, I guess. This is a regular. It says A2585, so possibly this was built in 1985. It's got a big music box there on top. I don't know if you can see that. 
And so it, I'd almost guess as fat as that thing is, it probably has two tunes. Yeah, there we go. Normally when you have two lines, I don't know what it says, but normally when you have two lines, that means that the top one and the bottom one are, they're separate music. So let's see. Well, I can possibly make a cuckoo. I need to get the chain back on here and the chain back on on the music to be able to listen to it or maybe that's all I want to do is listen to it. Give me a second here. So in this box after I got the chain on I noticed something and I don't know if you can see that or not but on the wheel there's two cutouts. Two cutouts definitely tell you there are two tunes on on that wheel there so it shuts off the proper time. I'm not sure if I can get this yep and he's not going in someone's been pulling on the chain and move this so I got the disc or there's a screw in here that you can loosen up and then adjust when the man goes in and I'm going to see about triggering this one more time as you heard you you can't really hear the music I mean you can hear it but it's so light let me see if I can trigger this again where is that part it's clear in there Oh, here it is. So, I'll have to hold this back. This is one of your adjustments in which if it could go again, you could hear it, but let's try to listen to it. So that's, if, as you can hear, it's not very loud. That means the comb on the music box needs to be pulled a little bit closer to get the sound out of it. So anyway, let's go ahead, release the music man, release the bird, take the hands off, take the chains out, and get working on this thing. This is... The one that's on the right side is just a little bit longer and that's a good thing to take a note or just rubber band it onto here. Now these have been rebuilt by somebody and they use tieback paper but they kind of miss the boat on this side. They might have had it in there but there's a possibility these are opening up so far it just blew out like that. And it doesn't want to stay down. This side's out too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of my wires I made to hold this thing shut. So it's not doing too bad right now. But And there's the washer they put on the top of it. They normally have a weight inside here. And the weight's missing. And I'm not sure but I think I saw some weights floating around somewhere around here. So we might be able to put the weight back in here. Anyway let me get this thing clamped shut. Seems to be staying now. So I guess I don't have to. So the next thing I'm going to do is get these chains taken off the ends of them and get the chains pulled out and then pull the movement out. I kind of remember when you're putting this clock back together again this here is the side of the music. It will be a longer chain so after you're done cleaning your chains, hold the chains up together and the longest one will be the music side. Otherwise, if you just throw them in and get it wrong, you'll find that one of the weights will hit the floor on the time side or the cuckoo side before 
And and the side that has the music will never hit the floor. Just saying, you want to try to get those, try to remember to get these things on the right ones. As you can see, this movement is quite tarnished, and it's a newer movement. I'm going to guess because it had Phillips screws, and it only had three, not four. And up here it says synthetic oil. So normally, a, a synthetic oil supposedly doesn't dry out like the normal clock oil. And usually if it says synthetic oil and you use synthetic oil, it seems to run a lot easier than the other clocks that don't say synthetic oil and you add the synthetic oil to it. So anyway, need to get pictures of the back in which this one's got a screw that makes my life easier when it comes to setting up the cuckoo and the gong. That bird almost has a color to him that's glow in the dark, which that'd almost be a joke. Maybe they washed it and all the coloring came off and we might have to repaint that. I've never seen a bird that has that white, let alone a greenish tone like he does glow in the dark. Anyway, you want to get pictures of the front side. Now they're on the side, this here is what triggers your music box. Look at that big opening, that eye there. Normally you have a fine little hole to stuff the music box wire in. This one here looks very easy. But you want to get pictures of everything because pictures are your friend. You notice this winder's got the bigger gear down there. This one doesn't. You want to get a picture of this deal here because you might not understand how it goes back together again when you do put this clock back together. And what we're going to try to do, we're going to take everything off that we can. And then what, what we're going to try to do is lift this thing off so we can get pictures of the layers as we take them off. So that way you can see where these things sit in amongst the gears and whatnot. If you've never taken one of these things apart. So let me, gosh, that's small. Let me take that apart. Let me get the pictures, take that apart. This does have the spring here that holds this down a little bit better. So that way it will operate properly. Some clocks don't have this, so don't worry about it, but Normally, if they got a peg sticking out here, it's supposed to have this spring on there. So anyway, let me go ahead and get these little clips off and pictures taken, and I'll be right back. Normally, to get the music box out, it's very difficult. But on this clock, someone, someone was thinking, I guess. There's a screw there on the roof and a screw there and it'll drop out properly so that way I can get it out and clean it, oil it, adjust the comb in there and hopefully things will be sunny again. One, it's nice because the music man's not stuck to it. He's still in there and that brass wire, copper wire, whatever that is, and I'm sure it's brass probably, goes in that block, but what happens is you take this and slide it, that brass wire in there, and that causes him to go in, and then that way he can open and close because of the spring here. So... Yeah, these teeth are just barely hitting. And see right there, I already twist this a little bit. There.
So you notice this fell down on this stop. That's what you want. So now I can snug that screw up that's right down inside here. So it doesn't slip so bad like it was. This is the wire that hooks on to the movement. That's why I say it is so nice to have that big eye loop to hold on to that thing. So here I've taken off this washer that was on here with that E-clip. took the E-clip off of here. So now we can start taking it apart. This usually comes off with this. This here is what counts the hour. This here is what drops on here and this tells it what hour it is on this snail. Styrofoam all over the place, those peanuts. So, well, let's go ahead and release the spring and let's take it off so you don't lose it. And okay, we got pieces. Let's just put it that way to take off. We need to take, this here goes to the music box to stop it. We're going to have to take that off. And then inside here we have another E-clip. So that whole, this whole rod will come out. We have an E-clip here. Nothing there, so it shouldn't be. We got one there, so this whole thing might be able to come out after I take those clips out. I don't know they're... I, mean, I need to still use my real small screwdriver to get them to come out. I don't have them magnetized, and I should because... That's what most of my stuff I need is magnetized in order to get it to do what I want to do. So there I can leave that to that together so that way that adjustment is pretty much there. I just need to clean it up. For this one, no matter what, I need to take this off. with a smaller screwdriver. And now get this E-clip that's buried in here just a little bit off without it flying at no man's land. It came up, but I have no idea where it went. Hopefully, hopefully it's up on my my wife's towel. <laughs> and there that piece is off. If you lose those things, it's a good idea to have more of them, extras. And I think the book says you're not supposed to reuse them, but are they paying the bill? If, if, you fix, if you've gotten off of there, you should be able to get back on unless you've uh, bent it up. So this is not going to come off because that's part of a timing thing. So that means there's going to be a piece in here that stays on. This won't come off because I don't want to pry all this stuff off either. Let's go ahead and take that bird off. And you're putting a plastic footed bird on don't tighten it very much. Just snug it up. 
because you'll break that thing like you wouldn't believe. And believe it or not, this one is not broken yet. So let's take this off. We need to separate that a little bit in there so it'll slide right off. Let's put a screwdriver in there and give it a little bit of a twist. Enough to get it to come off that swing and then bring it through. And while we're here, let's take this star wheel off. Will this one fit in there? Yep. Like I say, I like the ones that have the screw in them so much easier to adjust. And let's go ahead and untie this wire to this because I like to have those things out. Usually there's enough spring on here if it did break. You can still tighten it up by pulling some of that spring back. If you need to order new spring wire, this is what I got to make my springs with. So now that's that that's out, you should be able to turn it. And you see that lower one? This lower one locks it into place, a short one. The taller one is the one that hits the star wheel. You took pictures so you know the short arm is on the top and the longer arm is on the bottom. Here you spin it around you notice the plate has got cutouts. That's so this locking arm can slide through there. So normally I take this off. I'm not going to take it off this time. There's a chance you take it off. What you what if you want to? You separate these. Put a screwdriver in there and work it a little bit on on both of these then you can put your screwdriver in here and twist and pop it out but just remember you've got to be careful because if you break one of these you're kind of sol when it comes to trying to find new pieces like that to p install in here to get them to work again i've taken these out in my other videos it hadn't been a problem but i'm just warning you so let me get my fancy dancy legs here onto this movement so I can take this thing apart and hopefully be able to show you how the gears are set up in, in here so when you put it back together again you'll get it back together the right way. Like I say, pictures are your is, are your best friend. So let me get these four nuts off, and then we'll separate this. Okay, let's try to carefully get this thing apart. So this plate, just because, it isn't necessary to get it shiny, but I might do that to this one because this is the back of the plate and this is for a customer, just for a la la. It, it doesn't make any difference whether it's shiny or not. You don't never see this thing, but uh, you can see in here everything it says 
that there's a date that yeah, I'll get that it says a 25 dash 85 that's why I say this is probably a 1985 movement made in West Germany so that was after the war it's a regular and it has the GM that's got those numbers here tells you to use the synthetic oil and tells you the number but if you know what synthetic oil is you don't have to worry about that this is good and open which is good if it's squeezed together nine times out of ten it fell off the wall and twisted it when it rammed itself up but also when they're squeezed together your pendulum when it swings it'll start twisting as it's swinging and that's kind of irritating and also if it starts twisting too much it'll hit the weights and cause it to stop so let me get a picture of what we have here because this is the way I want to look and in front of you I will take this thing apart so we can get down to this piece here which is what triggers the bird to go stay out or come back in So let's start with this clicker here. All clickers are not created equal. You'll see this plate in here. That's the one you got to worry about sometimes if this thing's not holding. It could be that these ears are broke off or whatever and you can rebuild these if you want to or just buy a whole new clicker by looking at what yours looks like and knowing yours is a one day clock that also helps and you can order new ones this is the time side we're dealing with right now so when the pendulum ticks it hits this and it slowly moves it along Size a little tarnish actually this clock doesn't look too bad the movement so this side here is the cuckoo side And I guess, well, you guys can watch. This here comes out. No, no, I don't. That's hooked to that wheel. But this here is part of your timing. But your gear, let's get this one out. This is the very bottom one, the first thing that goes in. There's your little wire for timing also. This here has a E-clip on it. Let's take that off so we can get this apart. Just show you just where this thing's gonna go or how it goes in back out again. I should have disconnected the spring to that. So this here pops in that hole there like so and it usually that's what holds the bird out but like I say this sprung because it's behind it's all behind this and so to get this out you have to lift it up and 
And you notice it's like this on around that gear there. So this doesn't come out because it has that. Let's take these legs off so you can maybe see a little bit better. So this doesn't come off because it has this timing and this is what moves that ratchet looking thing as it counts the hour. This here doesn't come out because it's pressed in there. I don't want to deal with it. It does have the spring in here and this is the spring that is compressed in here to make the hands move compared to the, your much older clocks. It doesn't have this. It's all coming off of possibly your winder. But the winder will stick clear through kind of like this is. And then there'll be a gear that will attach over that way to the minute hand and whatnot. And you need tension because it'll have a tension spring in there. So anyway, this is as far as we can go. We're going to go ahead and put this in the cleaner. And be back at when it's ready to put back together. I'll go ahead and get it through the movement cleaner. Then I'll bring it, once it's done, I'll bring it in and use Dawn dishwashing soap and hot water and a toothbrush and scrub these things down and then I'll take a toothpick and squirrely it in each one of those holes on this side then come back and do it on this side and I'll do it to the other plate as well because even with a sonic cleaner it doesn't always get everything out of the holes and you want this thing to run when you're done putting it together so use a toothpick Okay, I loosen those two screws and I move the comb and it's on the table but it'll sound just the same in the box, maybe a little, little bit better, echoey, but That was short and sweet, wasn't it? So what I found was these combs are starting to wear because it's played so much and so that's actually why this comb need to be brought a little bit closer so now it plays and this is the music man the wire that drops into here i'll run this again up in my hand and you can watch the that part see the music man's coming out that rod there makes him come out Now he's getting ready to shut off. Like I say, if once this shuts off and if the music man's not going in, you'll lose this is this happens to have two screws in there. And you'll loosen them and then turn this until let's call it the music man rod drops down in there. So that and then Retighten them then play it again because you might have to make some Final adjustments to get it to work right for him to come back in where he, when he's supposed to Anyway, I need to clean this up a little bit I'm not gonna tear it totally apart and I, I am gonna oil it though As new as this is this does have that plastic gear that's the one that breaks on everybody all the time and if you have music playing and you keep hearing this tick that's because that's been broke if it even works at all and it's got a crack in it so this will hit that and make that ticking
Okay, okay, we got them all cleaned. We got the toothpick ran through all the holes. Now let's try to put this thing back together again. Forgot about that one right there. Let me tighten that up and go from there. So now I got together. Actually, I'd like to oil this thing before I put all these levers and whatnot in so they're not covering up where I need to oil I can make sure to get them all so I'm just going to put a drop on each one of them front and back and then I'll be back so let's go ahead and start putting these levers in And we have this one that also takes the E clip there. Here, let's do, get the spring on so we know for positive.
So right there is where you want it, and right there it is. So to adjust that, you have to take your frame apart, and there's a stop on this gear here. I don't know if you can see in there that wire on the gear. that's coming around and hitting this and so what I need to do is back this up where it's supposed to be when I separate this plate I got to take this gear stop it from touching the other gear and then turn it to where it can rest right there this pin easier said than done I will admit like I said, I gotta get off of this gear here because it's this gear that has the big things here that that's gonna mess me up if I don't move it away from there. Okay, so I, I have plenty of space here, so I didn't take the nut totally off. I reached in here. I was able to grab this gear very carefully. And use this plate to pry up and once this gear became free I pulled it back away from this gear and then I was able to take my screwdriver and just lightly turn this to get it to where I needed it to be so let's see if I did any good at that this time I gotta turn it the right way too. So there we go, we're really close. So I guess I'll I'll be happy with that. So we got those in. Yeah, that's 12. There's our half hour. See how we're up here? We're just fine. The 12 o'clock was able to pass nicely coming up through here. And that's what we're looking for. We don't want to be too close here otherwise you might end up having a problem here's a half hour there's one o'clock I think it was one two that no, half hour to two o'clock now we should have our half hour hit. You notice that never falls all the way down on the half hour. It's not supposed to. Three o'clock. So actually it's pretty good. So if you remember, we had the longer arm on first. Get that locked through there. 
and the shorter arm and now the gong Spring drop down, so I don't know what's Let's the other way of the locker. There we go. Now, so that spring quits messing with us, let's grab a hold of it, stick it in the hole. Trying to look professional here. <laughs> we want is to kind of try to tie it up. Or at least get it around that wire its own wire so to test this you need to hold it up so they're not going beyond the star wheel So at the moment, let's check and make sure this here is in place. Right there is lock. So that means we can install this. And then this is in the lock position, you're looking for gong cuckoo, so you watch your arms. And what you're going to do is just turn this. It's not attached, it's just on. Cuckoo. Let's get over here and do it this way. Gong cuckoo. There's a hair more. Oops, I'm messing this up. We're going to run this and see where we're at. There we go, see that? Gong cuckoo. Gong cuckoo. There you go. Like I say, those are so easy to set by because you have the screw there, you don't have to separate it and turn gears or anything else. This here we can install later. But when we do, we'll put it through the bottom here. We can install it now, just that it kind of gets in the way when you set it in the case. Once you have that into place, 
you come to the end here and give it a little bit of a crimp so that way it doesn't fall off. And I didn't look at this, but I am now. You want this wire, this wire as straight as possible that hooks to the pendulum. When this is off beat, you don't mess with this wire. It's the wire here on the back side is what you slightly bend. What you do is you hold it up here so you don't disturb inside the movement. Hold it up there with a pair of pliers and then just give this a little bit of a bend so one way and if it's not working out for you, it gets worse, then take and bend the other way. In fact, you could probably put your fingers, let's say, on both sides of this and put your thumb right in the middle of just this wire and give it a, a bend. I'm not going to do this because I'm not having a problem with it. So anyway, getting back over here, I see this here is not staying in place where it needs to. So I'm going to have to, oh, I see. Let me show you. This is supposed to be behind this rod here. Now to make it easier for me without taking this apart and everything falling out again, I'm going to go ahead and undo the wire or the cuckoo bird. Kind of like I told you I didn't want to do. See, it has a halfway decent spread. It's going to spread more as I push this thing through. Maybe not. It has bend a little bit more. So this has got a pretty good spread on already. Okay, got it out. And I'm going to sneak it around. Be See? This lever here, that's the side I need it on. Then you pump, pop this back in. Then you squeeze this back together. But pay attention, you don't want too tight, you don't want too loose. This here's pretty free considering. But now let's try it. Cuckoo bird comes out and pops back in. That's exactly what you want there. And again, coming to the back side. Gone cuckoo, gone cuckoo. Very good. Now, of course, you're going to have to watch these wires from being too close to the pendulum part because sometimes when the clock cuckoos and all of a sudden your pendulum stops, that's because this came up and rubbed on there. So that's another good thing to look for if you're having a problem with it. Stop ticking when it cuckoos. So I want to test the movement. And they usually say don't put it in the box because you'll probably be taking it out again. And realistically, at least 50% of the time, they're right. So these legs that hold up my movement, they also will hold it against the wall. You notice two of them, it comes with four of these things. Two of them have got these. With this mid fours, you... Take this apart. You put it through here. You take the nut. You bring it up 
to snug then back it off because you're not ready to have that up there already take the other one that has the uh, exception the threads for the nut tight and loosen it now put these back on and you're gonna hook this back to leave that space in there you can be hooking this back to the movement which I'll show you in a second So you decide whether you want to see this side as this thing's ticking or do you want to see this side? Now we do have, uh, I'm not ready to, or worried at the moment to try to bend this rod if it needs to. I will be leveling this across, but I'm more interested in uh, getting the hour hand, minute hand on there and watching this to make sure it's still working good so what you do means that i want the front you bring this around to the back right here is where it's going to hang on the wall which i'll show you that piece there that i permanently installed in the wall it's just a screw with a metal deal to accept that so what you're going to do is you're going to Set these things on here at the top. They're on. Now you can snug your nut up finger tight. Don't take a wrench to it. It don't need a wrench to it. And make sure this isn't in the way. The bottom ones aren't as important where you put them you just need to make sure they're not in the way of anything all it is is going to hold it up hold it away from the wall oh and before i test this let me get the chains installed in here and i've done this many times but what you do is you figure out which way it turns this is turning this way, so you install the chain down there, fish it through here, and then start turning it over, and then start spinning the gear, and you'll get it on. Same with this one. Once you have that one in, get it wrapped around something so it don't come off. Which way is this turn? This one's turning this way, so you drop the chain down there, like I said before, and you just don't drop it down too far especially this one because you can't see it but you don't want it, the chain to tangle up in the other gears you drop it just so far and then you start cranking this thing around as you're turning that wheel until voila so let me get those chains installed So that's the part I installed into the wall and you'd install that in your board or whatever if you want to install it permanently in the wall. This hangs right here and then you level it and that's looking pretty level and now I need to hang the weights on there and test it well I got the clay case all fixed back up again but now let's put the movement before I forget take the horn off don't glue it in and we'll take this off look how bare it is but still it's a nice looking clock yes and now we'll put the movement in but oh I forgot we gotta put the music box in first 
so that way it's not in the way. We got together. You tell me if you can hear this better or not. The second tune. Sure, I think it's a little bit fast, but you got to have the same weight all the way across. And this is a newer clock. And this way, if you got enough of these, maybe you can pause your TV for a little bit. So I watch Mark, instead of worrying about sticking your pliers through there, get yourself a magnet screwdriver. Drop that down by the hole, this will bring it right through. Didn't even dawn on me. How quick is that? Now we have both those beautiful clocks going vintage, newer, but it does have the music. Anyway, this clock here, I thought, I knew it had two tunes, but the adjustment in it only allowed it to have the music on the hour and not the half hour. I let it run a while and noticed that the music weight was staying high while the other ones are going down which is a good sign saying it's supposed to have the music on the half hour and the hour and normally if they have a two tune that's what they do is have the music on the hour and half hour so anyway we got that adjusted it seems to be running beautifully both of them so all i gotta say is we got her done don't forget to subscribe because it's free and until next time let's see what kind of clock we're going to be working on